For the past several months, I've been reviewing printers that GearBest.com has sent me, and I've done almost all of the CR10 models by this point, with one exception, and that is the CR10 Mini, so it's no surprise that they decided to go ahead and send me one of those for review as well. Now, in just about every respect, the CR10 Mini is the same as the regular CR10 model, with the main difference being the size of its build volume. It's got a smaller build plate and also a shorter uh, gantry, so its vertical build volume is smaller. This is the regular CR10, you can see here, and I'm going to put the build plate for the CR10 Mini on top of it, just to give you an idea. You see that it's rectangular rather than square, so it's got a little bit of less space than the CR10 does. Plus, the vertical build volume on the Mini is about that much shorter than on the regular CR10. So while it is smaller than the regular CR10, it is kind of funny that they call it the Mini, because this is larger than most 3D printers, and in fact, if you compare it to the Dremel 3D Idea Builder's build plate, which I have here, you can see that it's much larger than my original first 3D printer, and I did all sorts of things on that one, so uh, it's not as though you're going to be significantly cramped with this unless you're planning to do sort of full-size cosplay pieces or helmets or things of that nature. I decided if I'm going to keep making 3D printer reviews like this that I don't want to make them more project-focused, so instead of just focusing on the printer itself and printing a few random things, I'm going to use the printer to actually accomplish a project of some kind. So this time we're going to be focusing on Ezra Bridger's lightsaber from the TV show Rebels. He's got a very unusual lightsaber. It sort of combines a blaster and a saber in one, and I thought it would be interesting to try. And it just so happens that there is a very good design on Thingiverse, available for free to download, and it combines um, about 20 different parts into one design, and that allows you to print them in the appropriate colors of filament so you have a decent-looking saber without having to actually paint it. So this is a great design, although I found one small flaw with it is that they don't label the parts by the color, and so it can be difficult to tell which parts are supposed to go with which color. I ended up printing the wrong color in, in several cases, or printing something that I didn't need. Uh, I had to go back and print like three or four different parts that I ended up missing or printing in the wrong color. So here we have the silver parts being printed on a raft. I don't normally use a raft, but I find that if you have a lot of small parts like this, it can sometimes help prevent them from coming loose from the build plate. This is 3D Solutech Silver PLA, which I've been using quite a bit because it's relatively cheap on Amazon. Here we have a couple of parts in Hatchbox Gold Filament. Uh, now this <laughs> was another example of one that I made a mistake on. One of these uh, rings was actually not necessary and I had forgotten to print another part that was, so I had to come back and do that. The problem was I was running very low on gold filament and I just barely was able to do it. This was before I printed the extra part, so <laughs> I was a little bit lucky. I also did a couple of parts in red. This is the Maker Geeks red. Finally, we had the sort of main body of the blaster slash saber. Now, in the one that the creator of this model made, it was a sort of a bluish-green color, and that does seem to sort of match what we see on screen, but I didn't have anything like that, so I chose to use this Urban Fossil color, which is sort of a grayish green color. Uh, it's not an exact match, but I think it works pretty well. So here we have many of the parts that I ended up printing. This was before I realized that I was missing some parts and had done some parts in the wrong color, but I think you'll get the idea of what these parts look like coming off the printer. Uh, you can see they're on rafts, as I mentioned. That turned out to be a bit of a problem, uh, as you'll see in a minute, but uh, overall I would say that the print quality was pretty good, uh, definitely pretty smooth. I think I ended up printing at least some of these at a higher or more more fine layer height than I had originally intended because uh, I was intending to do this at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, which is sort of a medium setting, and I think I ended up doing it at a 0.12, which is a very fine one. But either case, uh, they, they came out looking very smooth and nice. Uh, we have here, this has got a lot of support material in it that we're going to have to remove with some needle-nose pliers or something. Uh, we're going to have to 
probably do some sanding just to make sure the parts all fit together. Use some glue to attach them to each other. It was originally my intention to do all of this on camera and sem assemble it all for you in a sort of time lapse, but uh, I ran into several problems, one of which being the missing parts that I mentioned, but also I had a lot of trouble getting the raft off of a couple of parts. Uh, most of them were just fine, but the raft seemed to have fused to some of the other parts, making them uh, almost impossible to remove, which was a bit of a problem. I also found that a lot of the parts were surprisingly difficult to get to fit together. Uh, you know, it's not unusual with 3D printed parts that you have to sand something a little bit to get it to fit in. This was a little bit more than I was used to, and it turned out to be just a lot of work and not something I could do on camera very easily. In fact, I had to uh, use a hammer to really get these in, <laughs> in some cases. Uh, it worked eventually, but yeah, it was, it was a bit of a struggle. And here is the finished product, and I'm really impressed with how good it looks. I, I really like this kind of design where they have uh, lots of parts that you can put together and print in the appropriate colors, because it, it looks extremely good, actually. Uh, you don't have to worry about sanding and painting and everything like that. That's, that's quite a bit of work. Uh, if you look closely, you can see some banding. Uh, especially in this light, it uh, looks pretty bad right there, but uh, in reality, in person, it looks uh, really quite smooth, even from a relatively close distance. So I'm pretty happy with the quality that the Mini is able to produce here. It's really no different than any of the other CR10 models that I have, as I said, except for the size of the bed, although you can tell from uh, what I was doing here that the size was more than enough for doing any kind of project like this. So I would definitely call this a success. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned is that my son, who is 12 years old, is actually the one who assembled this printer in the first place, and he's helped me pick out some models to print and incorporate into this review, so I'd like to go ahead and show you some of those now. First off, we have these low-poly fantasy tabletop models, kind of Lord of the Rings inspired, I think, and uh, these are just very simple geometric models that are easy to print. They don't require any kind of support or anything like that. And they also print relatively quickly. I can't remember exactly how long, but not not too long. And uh, I think they came out pretty well overall. There was a little bit of drooping here. Uh, if you can see, uh, there's just an unsupported part there. Uh, normally I would just snip that off. It's not a big deal, but uh, I wanted to show it to you. I think maybe part of the problem is that I was printing with Maker Geeks filaments. All of these are Maker Geeks colors and uh, they recommend that you print it quite hot at 235 degrees centigrade. So here we have also the elf with a similar problem there on his hand. And then finally the human warrior, which came out just about perfect. Next he wanted to try something a bit more artistic, so he chose the thinker from Rodan. This is from the My Mini Factory Scan the World project. And I think it came out extremely well overall. We did this at the finest layer height that we could. It is, of course, uh, the kind of thing that requires a lot of support material for overhanging parts. But uh, those removed relatively cleanly. And in the end, we were left with a pretty nice thinker statue. Uh, it's quite smooth in most places, and a uh, nice amount of detail. You can see in the parts where we had a lot of supports, like the fingers here, uh, there's a, a little bit of roughness, but it worked really well. I mean, a finger hanging down like that is extremely hard for an FDM 3D printer, a traditional 3D printer, to handle, and it actually did pretty good. Next up we have Majora's Mask from The Legend of Zelda. I'm not even positive this is the same one that I downloaded and printed, to be honest with you, but there's several of them uh, sort of widely available out there. We also use the finest layer height setting on here, particularly because this one has to be printed flat like this, and when you do that, it really accentuates the layers. Uh, you can still see some a little bit of banding here, and I really think maybe I can... Uh, try sort of adjusting my belts on the on the printer or something like that, but uh, for the most part I'm pretty happy with how this came out. On the back we had uh, quite a bit of support material and also underneath these spines because uh, they're sort of pointing upward a little bit. 
Finally, we have the Aztec Chief model, which is a nice one because it prints very easily. There's no uh, infill needed and no support needed or anything of that nature. But as you see, I had a bit of a problem, and uh, this turned out to be <laughs> a little bit of an ordeal. Uh, I came back after setting this to start printing. I came back and found when it should have been done that it had stopped at this point and that the printer was just sort of there, dead. The screen wouldn't turn on. Uh, turning it on and off had no effect, and uh, I didn't know what the problem was. I did some basic troubleshooting, like checking the fuse and power cord and so forth, but it turned out, uh, after doing some research, that the most likely explanation was a bad power supply, which you can see part of here. So I went on to Amazon and bought a compatible power supply. It cost about $18. I was careful when I was undoing all of the wires here, which just are sort of screwed in place, uh, to make note of where they were, I put some tape on the wires to make sure I remembered what order they go in. I'm not even positive that makes the difference, but I wasn't taking any chances. So here you can see the old one that apparently failed, and here it is with the new one installed. So all in all, it was a relatively painless repair to make, but still, it's not something you really should have to do. I don't think this is really uh, emblematic of any problem with the Mini itself because this same power supply is used across the entire CR10 line and it's also used in a lot of other 3D printers. I just got unlucky this time. If you were a customer of some place like GearBest or other places in China, I imagine you could contact them and they would send you a replacement power supply eventually. It does take quite some time as you might expect coming from China. And, you know, quite frankly, it might just be quicker to get it from Amazon or someplace like that because it's not a super expensive part. This is the kind of thing you kind of have to keep in mind if you're buying from China. You may be responsible for doing some of these repairs and for supplying your own parts in many cases. It's just something you have to include in your calculations when you're deciding if it's worth doing, I think. So I was finally able to print this model, and it came out really well, I think. It's uh, very smooth, generally speaking, and uh, no real problems at all. As I said, this print's entirely hollow, so it's not a terribly long print despite its size. As I mentioned earlier, this is pretty much identical to the regular CR10 in terms of its features, so it lacks the filament sensor, the dual Z-axis lead screws of the uh, S models, but it does in fact have power loss recovery, and in fact after I replaced the power supply, it wanted to keep printing the model that I had been printing. At that point I had already removed it from the bed though, so I couldn't do that. Um, so it's, it is basically identical to the CR10. I feel like if you can get the regular CR10 for not much more than the Mini, which is often the case, then I would go with the regular CR10 just because of the bigger build volume. But there's definitely nothing wrong with the Mini at all, and if you want a bit cheaper printer or a smaller printer, I'd say it's a, a fine choice. GearBest has given me some coupon codes for the Mini, which I have in the description below, as well as all of the other CR10 models, if you're interested in those as well. If you have any questions about the Mini or any of the other CR10 models, feel free to ask me in the comments. Thanks for watching.